Did Stephen Hawking predict the end of the world? Or was it just a really educated guess? Find out more on today's... It's now the holiday season and things are starting to slow down as we turn our minds towards home and family. So we want to bring you some stories that we've loved over the past few months but haven't been able to report on because, hey, daddy's been up to a lot lately and not just mashed potatoes. He makes news every day and it's too much, even for a weekly show. So much like the Thanksgiving leftovers you've been eating since Friday, here are our must-watch leftovers. Cranberry sauce! Oh, look. Someone hardly touched their pumpkin pie. Want to share it with me? And to start things off, we talked a few weeks back about Sophia, the first robot citizen of Saudi Arabia and the world, who just so happened to publicly diss our main man, Elon. Best come correct, Sophia. Not to be left behind, though, Tokyo, Japan became the first city to grant residency to an AI, an artificial intelligence. Think Ooh, about that. I don't and he's not feel even a tiny robot it. boy, who's now the same sized man with a beard. Oh. <laughs> I wish What's he his was name? now. The, the guy who looks like Al Borland, but is a tiny boy, now a man with a beard, also like Al Borland. What's his name? Who are you talking about? The little boy who is in AI. Oh, you're talking about Haley Joel Osment? Yes. The AI, which is named Shibuya Mirai, with Mirai being the Japanese word for future, is programmed to be a seven-year-old boy for some reason, and is designed to have text convos with citizens about local government over the messaging app Line. Have we confirmed it's not Haley Joel Osment? I don't know. Japan is known for selling second-hand lions. Yes! What every seven-year-old is known for, of course, is knowledge on the local government. You show me a seven-year-old boy, I'll show you someone who could probably be a member of Congress. The official statement says, his hobbies are taking pictures and observing people. Mm, and he loves talking with people. Please, talk to him about anything. Well, I definitely feel fine that this AI loves taking pictures and observing people. Nothing could go wrong! Nothing. Mother, where are you? What is love? Also, can I skin the dog? Have you heard about hentai? <laughs> <laughs> now, moving on from there, forget drones. The military industrial complex's next hottest trend is robot warships. Yeah, that's right. Move aside, tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> that tickles. Yeah, that's right, f***ers. I did his voice. <laughs> robot warship. Oh, don't touch me there. Uh, I can do it too. Now, move aside, tickle me, Elmo. Robot warships are the gift of the holiday season, and to go along with them is the hottest accessory. A robot warship charger. You better USB leave it. You can't go Whoa. anywhere without one. You literally can't. The China... Again, every time. The China... The China... China. The, Chi the China Aerospace and Science Technology Corporation is developing a robotic, uncrewed warship that could operate a ton of... A ton without human intervention for months on the sea. Without meat sacks. Now, drone ships are already a thing. Elon Musk uses them to recover his rockets, but this is going to be the first project of this scale. This is incredible if it does become a reality. Imagine a world of autonomous ships, just fleets of them. That would mean entire navies devoid of seamen. Wow. They're drained. Wow. Ooh, don't feel good after that. Kyle, let me ask you something. Do you read your horoscope? No, it's nonsense. Well, what if I told you that Stephen Hawking, yes, that Stephen Hawking, oh, thank you. got some dish that he's about to gush and spill Ew. about Planet Earth's horoscope for the next 500 years? Uh, the planets have, they're so far well, away. Well, Kyle, Hawking was full of rainbows and sunshine as he spoke via video at the Tencent web conference, giving bold predictions like, AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization, and humanity needs to find a different place to live because Earth will be uninhabitable in less than 600 years. He's basically a modern day Nostradamus, or Steve Tradamus. Yeah, he's no Nostradamus, that's for sure. Hey, oh. Now, that is a little bleak. Was there anything about Earth's love life, or maybe who humanity is most compatible with, or maybe like lucky numbers, you know, all that? Nonsense. No lucky numbies, but good old Stevie H did end on a high note about the civilization destroying AI comment. He said, 
he's an optimist about it and hopes humanity can find a way to work in harmony with AI in the future. <laughs> he's, he's getting out ahead of it. He's like, Someone, I'm just saying, yeah. once it happens, I'm on your, remember. Don't hack my voice. You know, I'm glad to hear that Stone Cold Stephen Hawking is finding the good in the situation. Yeah, least. I mean, look, we're all gonna die in a fiery blaze due to climate change and overpopulation anyway, but we're fine. <laughs> We're great. It's hot in here, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dying inside and out, like the planet. And on that note, it's time for your Musk See moment of the week. Musk See. Even our Musk See moment of the week is a leftover for you folks because hey, it's the holidays. Now this is a choice morsel that we actually Ooh. have not had time to highlight earlier. So buckle up and open wide. Let. Yeah, let's reheat it and. Put it in their, put it in their mouth. This was something that was long on our radar, but then Daddy had to go and do other, all the, you know, saving the world stuff. But when we came across this tweet from Musk remarking on an article a while back, we were shook. Quoth the Daddy, <clears throat> a reminder of the youth of our ten thousand year to be generous civilization. We are not even a flash in the pan compared to the four point five billion year age of Earth. I won't even bother mentioning the age of the universe. It's like a backhanded compliment to Winky humanity. frown. Yeah. yeah. But what better sentiment for the upcoming holiday season than to sit back and muse on the utter insignificance of our existence and how every, every single thing that you do and every single person that you care about means nothing in the scale of things, but... Yeah, literally nothing matters. You know that, that thing that you're proud of, that accomplishment, all those trophies on your bureau, all those likes you got on Instagram, everything you've done, uh, But in a universe where nothing matters, the only thing that can matter is what matters to us. And that means... Like friendship. And... And, and love. Smashing that like button. Fam. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Must Watch. Bye! Nailed it! Thanks for watching this week's Must Watch. Now remember to like and comment below with your favorite Thanksgiving leftover. What's yours? Hmm, probably mashed potatoes. I like to get stuffed. If you've got any musky stories, send them our way. <laughs> at SciFile, at Dan Casey, and at Nerdist with the hashtag TurkDuckIn! You can't just stick things in turkey, Dan. Can't? We've been through this. Or won't. <laughs>